So I just got this today, the Mad Cats controller. And uh, it's a pretty cool little device. I, I haven't hooked it up yet or anything. So uh, as the internet loves to do, we're going to show what it looks like from the box state. So I'm sure you've seen this in 50 other videos. You get the instructions with stickers and the controller, some batteries, and this little clip thing. And uh, the reason I picked this controller is because it's pretty much identical to an Xbox 360 controller. And uh, I really don't care that I can use it with my phone. I'm using it with my Nexus player. And that's the hope anyways. But also it has three modes. It has mouse mode, uh, computer mode, and then regular mode, which is the game smart Android mode. And so we're going to hook that up and see how it goes. I now have my Mad Cats controller connected to my Nexus player. Apologize the light in here is kind of crappy. So you can see it works just fine. I'm gonna open up this uh, Riptide 2 game. And uh, this game's cool because it actually has a split screen. So, uh, what I'm going to do is connect one of these uh, fancy smancy wired Xbox controllers as well. It's difficult to do while holding this. So now, uh, as you can see, this is player two, this is player one. I can go up and down, and they're both on there. And uh, I don't have another person to play with me. <laughs> but as you can see, just like a regular console game, it's uh, Can't really play this game while holding a camera, but uh, you get it. So it works very well, and of course, uh, this button right here, it works like a home button. You can navigate just fine. And uh, to hook this up, uh, all you have to do is go to Add Accessory. And then long hold the blue button to turn it on, and it'll blink, and then it'll you use your uh, controller to click pair, and it'll pair it right up, and that's pretty much it. So this is probably the coolest thing that you can do with this is uh, use either lo uh, Moonlight or Kino console to play computer games. So... Uh, like I showed you guys last time. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> this is a uh, dust. I have not played that much of this game, but uh, it's pretty fun what I played of it. And uh, my it looks kind of blurry for me, purely because my monitor uh, on my laptop isn't 1080p. However, if you're using a computer that is 1080p then it will stream in 1080p and if you're using an NVIDIA computer uh, NVIDIA graphics processor on the computer I highly highly recommend um, using Moonlight instead of Kino console because uh, 
it works way better. It's le it's more clear and it looks basically like you're playing it on the system. Like you cannot tell that it is streaming at all. It's awesome. And that is assuming you have a good router. I have a Nighthawk and the Nexus player is Wi-Fi AC and the other device I would stream from that has a NVIDIA GPU is Wi-Fi AC and so it works fairly well. But anyways, um, another thing that was added, uh, going back to uh, Cyanogen Mod 12.1, they added a uh, app drawer now. So now all the apps, just like that other, I think it's called Sideload Launcher. You don't need that anymore. It's just part of Cyanogen Mod. And they added in another feature advanced reboot so I'm not gonna do it right now but you get the gist of it um, and then um, another thing that I talked about the last video is uh, moving apps to uh, a flash drive so last time I only had a 2 gigabyte flash drive, this time I now have upgraded to this bad boy. Um, you can't really see it, 128 gigabytes. And so uh, there are some apps like Another World, for some reason that game does not want to copy. It just has an error and it won't do it, so it's that game. It's not the feature in Terraria. You also can't do it uh, because... Uh, it just is grayed out and is disabled by the game developer. However, I was able to copy Asphalt, Badlands, all these other games. They are all on my flash drive. See, look at how much space that is. I mean, there's just no way. So right now, let's see how much actual space I'm using. I have, I moved Cody back because I felt like it was, a. Uh, a little bit more laggy at caching videos, but I might try putting it again because uh, dhacker29 put a patch to make it better uh, for streaming and caching, so we'll try that. But as you can tell, I have 2.84 gigabytes left of my internal storage, and then 116 available on my flash drive. Now, you might be wondering, what about that? those extra files that aren't just the app that games like Asphalt have. Well, there's a very simple solution to that. It's going to cost you a little bit over $2, but definitely worth it. It's this program called Link to SD+. Now, this program is not optimized for Android t TV, unfortunately. Um, but you can still navigate through most of it with the controller but as you can see you can move the actual app which uses the native Android function uh, the OBB files and the data files and so you can see the OBB files for Asphalt are 1.43 gigabytes and 61 megabytes for the data and in order to actually click these buttons right here you're gonna need to either use droid mode which I also highly recommend buying or you are going to have to use a mouse because until he updates it it will not function so I just got this app too it's called AirShare you put it on your phone or your tablet as well and you can send an APK file directly to the TV and it'll pop up to install it right off the bat which is a little bit easier than using ES File Explorer um, so that's handy um, and then um, the other thing that was fixed in Cyanogen Mod 12.1 a couple builds ago was the Daydream bug. The Daydream bug is fixed now and uh, you it doesn't disconnect the HDMI anymore. So it works perfectly normal like it should. The only remaining bug, of course, is the... Uh, the microphone on the remote still does not work, but other than that, everything works great. So that's pretty much it. Um, 
I'll probably make another update again once the microphone is fixed and when more features are added. And so this setup, it's pretty much awesome. Um, highly recommend this controller. I've only had it for a day, but it's been really good so far. It does actually work on your computer as well by using this little switch. And you, the only disadvantage that I've seen is you have to unpair it with the Nexus player and repair it with your computer. And then it also it has a little thing that you can use it with your phone too. That um, you put it on there and you put your phone on it, but I doubt that I'll use that. Um, but really it feels and functions pretty close to an Xbox 360 controller. It's pretty much exactly like a 360 controller on the Nexus player. Anyways, this has been Matthew Garvitt. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day. I look forward to making more videos for you guys. Bye-bye.